have already pre-shuffled. And I will be using two oracle cards for your oracle advice. They're the two cards that are to, to the very far left side of the screen. Then I'll go through the past, present, challenge, and outcome. So, Sagittarius. We have, I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. And then we have presence. On the flip side of the presence card, it says bring your mind into the present moment. Now is truly the only place to be. So, what these two cards are basically saying is that um, when you let go of the past or there could have been a situation or a person that you finally let go of and um, it, it was a great experience to release this person because the first time, it was the first, very first time that you could actually not despise that person or resent that person but for the first time you could actually uh, see this person with the eyes of love instead of hating them for any mistakes they made and who knows what happened maybe you got forgiveness or maybe they forgave you but it was a relief to finally let go and feel love for whatever person that you were dealing with and being that presence is your other oracle advice um, this experience it brought your mind into the present moment and you realize that now is really truly the only place to be and it was the best place for you to be and you knew that letting go of a situation was the thing to do so that is your oracle advice so let's move on over and take a look at the recent past. Now we have the High Priestess and then we have the Three of Cups. So with the High Priestess, it's a very spiritual card. It could have some sexual overtones. It can mean that you're in a, you're in a phase where um, you could have been in the recent past. You could have been more physically attractive to others. Now this card is tied to, to the moon, to femininity, to inspiration. This would have been a time to rely on your intuition and your inner knowledge rather than your conscious mind or intellect. It would have been also important for you to pay attention to your dreams at that time so keeping a dream diary or a journal would have been a good idea. Now, when you're asking questions about love and relationships when you get the High Priestess, it's a magical, mystical time for love uh, for anyone interested. If you're a woman, you could find people literally throwing themselves at you. The problem is that you'll attract both the good, the bad, and what do they say? The good, the bad, and the ugly. So it's not going to be, well, it would, since we're talking about the past, it wouldn't have been easy to tell which is which. Also, you probably had the power of femininity at your disposal at that time. And at first glance, it probably seemed great. So this high priestess is paired with the Three of Cups. Now this Three of Cups, it's considered to be a card about re reunions, um, but this is not always a romantic union. Not always, but it could be. It's a reunion in its broadest sense about running into someone or something that you've been away from for a long time. It's considered to be a happy reunion and very upbeat. 
It can also mean celebration, your own or someone that you care about, such as a celebration around a new baby, wedding, or any happy occasion. Now, when the Three of Cups talks about uh, love and relationships, this card can mean a reunion with a long-lost love. It does not always indicate that. So, to decide whether it fits that interpretation, well, you have to see what the rest of the reading is, and then uh, you can determine that. But uh, if you're single, Sagittarius, and we have some single listeners, uh, the most likely interpretation is that you'll meet a likely love soon. Someone who really fits the bill of the person that you've been looking for, and that this person um, probably will be a new love if you're single. If this, this is for the single listeners, and it probably someone, well, it's probably a new love and not someone that you used to be with. Once again, that part is only for singles. So if you're not, well, I guess you, you, you would be single, but this card is about uh, rejoicing, happiness, friendship. Okay, so with these two cards paired together for your recent past, we have the High Priestess and the Three of Cups. And they're basically saying that um, this High Priestess uh, could be someone that's was coming toward you at that time, or someone that you knew, um, or it was just basically a magical, mystical time for love for you, and a lot of people were uh, attracted to you in the recent past, and um, with that came along probably more than one reunion, a lot of get-togethers and a lot of celebrating. People were drawn to you, they were attracted to you, and you were probably invited to a lot of uh, different events and occasions, happenings, and a lot of, of a lot of affairs of different types. So it was a time of rejoice, happiness, and friendship in the recent past. So let's move on down to the present time. We have the Queen of cups and then it's paired with the lover's card now this queen usually indicates a woman who will be very helpful to you at this time she reminds us to bring love and compassion to our work and that's possible even if we work in a factory with objects all day rather than people also things are probably better in your working world when this card appears in your, in your reading. It's probably better, much better in your working world than, you, than you're realizing. Now this uh, Queen of Cups is paired with the Lover's card. The Lover's card is associated with the astrological sign of Gemini, the Twins. It's possible that you're feeling ambivalent about a relationship or a situation in your life. It could be that your heart is telling you one thing and your head is telling you another. The thing to do is within the bounds of your morality is to follow your heart. Some people say we, well some people say there are only two modes that any of us are operating under at a time and that's fear or love. So when you get the lover's card, it's, it's pretty much saying that it's safe to choose, choose love. So with these two cards paired together for your present time, the Queen of Cups and the Lover's card, there's a lady, a woman, could be your mother, could be your the person that you're dealing with, could be your sister or relative. Uh, she's She's very loving and compassionate. That's her energy. Okay, and like I said, she's either coming towards you or she's already there in your life. And it's here with the lover's card. Um, yeah, this is this is a lot, a whole lot of love. 
She's bringing love and compassion, and then the lover's card brings love in capital letters to the center stage of your life. So I'm picking up that this is something romantic, very romantic and um, very loving. There's a whole lot of love in uh, these two cards for your present time. So uh, this is not really supposed to be a love reading, but it seems like it's turning out to be that way. But it's it's a great thing. A lot of love. Um, this lover's card. Yeah, you'll be coming together with this this Queen of Cups. It's going to be a, a really loving union. Very strong. Very strong. So that's what we have for you at the present time. So let's move on down and take a look at the challenge. We have the King of Swords. And the King of Swords is paired with the Ace of Swords. Now the King of Swords stands for a powerful, opinionated, forceful man in your life. He will often, but not always, have hair on the darker end of the spectrum. You could be tempted to think only about how things affect you. Especially if this card is not representing a man in your life. So consider the feelings of others at, before you act at this time. This King of Swords is a very forceful energy. You may not be able to get this man in your life to change his mind or to do what you want. You may need to change something major about your behavior, thoughts, or expectations, but make sure you do not over overextend your reach. Uh, the King of Swords is paired with the Ace of Swords. Now, the Ace of Swords is a indicator of new beginnings of some sort in your life, possibly on several fronts. Sometimes this new beginning, it can be started by a separate, separation of some kind from a relationship or from a job situation. Just know that as anxiety producing as such a new beginning can sometimes be, that underneath it all is good beneficial energy that's getting you to where you want to go. The A's that calls on us to not be afraid to make a leap if it's in our best interest. So, with these two cards paired together for your challenge, um, there is a very forceful, opinionated, narcissistic type of man that's coming towards you. Okay, and if it's not someone coming towards you or in your life like that already, there's going to be a situation that's going to cause for you to be like that. Okay, very forceful, very opinionated, very sharp. Um, maybe arrogant, maybe pushy. Overstepping your bounds. And being that it's with the Ace of Swords, it's going to create a new beginning. So this person is going to... Um, help you create a new beginning or some type of situation that's causing you to be like this this um, king of swords it's creating um, probably more than one new beginning okay this person is this narcissistic type they're helping you create the new beginnings because you're separating from them yeah, because the ace, like I said, it's about a separation. And you have to separate before you get this new beginning. So, you're, um, this forceful person, yeah, yeah, you're leaving them behind. You've got the ace of swords, you're going to take your sword out, and you're going to, mm -mm, you're just going to, mm -mm, slice them out. You're going to slice out the situation, you're going to slice out the person. This narcissistic type, you know that it has to go. So, uh, whoever this is, it could be an uncle, uh, uh, um, it could be a co-worker. Uh, someone is giving you a hard time, but you're done with it. You cut it out, and it's causing you to have many, several wonderful new beginnings. So, that is your challenge. Now, let's move on over. Take a look at the outcome. 
we have the devil card and then we have the fool card so the devil card is um, you have to realize that no matter what your situation is that you always have options to choose from when you get the devil card first things first don't let other people tell you that you're that your options are limited if you come to that conclusion be sure you're coming to that conclusion on your own regardless it's going to be crucial to remember that you can free yourself from whatever restrictions are holding you back at any time you choose to do so you may have the feeling now that you are not in control of your life sometimes this will happen as a result of our own actions but more often as a byproduct of inaction so make sure to take action whatever steps you can to give yourself the feeling of however slight of being in control even if it's merely taking a choice on what you're going to have for dinner small baby steps they're important also so this devil card is paired with the fool card. Now the fool card, it's about newness in one form or another. In many ways it indicates the open-hearted energy and innocence of a child. Because children, they're trusting and trust forms the basis for this card. This is generally a positive card in the tarot. It's positive. Uh, it's about taking a leap. So it's very, it's positive. Um, it's an important time to be sure that you're looking where you're going also. Because if you're trusting yourself to take a step into the unknown, that's one thing. But if you do so without any thought whatsoever, it could be a big mistake just like you see in the picture there he's taking a, a leap without any thought whatsoever and he's about to walk off into the who knows Atlantic Ocean so yeah you got a childlike energy and you're ready to take a leap but try to pay attention to what you're leaping into now for your outcome this devil card and the full card pair together it's basically basically letting you know that you've got some some obsessions some some type of a devil energy addictions uh, sexual lust greed envy devil in energy you know what that is um, overeating over drinking those type of things something like that that's in your energy for the outcome and you kind of just feel like hanging loose and being foot loose and fancy free um, but what it's saying is that be careful at this time because you just might walk off into the Atlantic Ocean so be smart about this time and um, um, like I said earlier take um, baby steps get those addictions in control little tiny baby steps they're very important so Sagittarius I hope you enjoyed this reading I'll try to put a link below of the extended of this reading and um, I'll go over um, I'll go over a lot more I'll try to if I get caught up on the other readings that I have to do. So, I just want to say thank you so very much for watching. Please comment, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you'll get notified when I post my next reading. I am hoping that, you have, that you're having a wonderful 2020 and that your February is a very beautiful month for you. Thank you once again for watching.